Okay. Hello. <laughs> so, I want to do a uh, video about the Dolphin emulator, which is one of my favorite, or at least it used to be, when I had a weaker computer, because it runs really well on weaker computers, and it's GameCube and Wii games, so it's two emulators in one, and they're both really good, so that's nice. Uh, you can download just from the like base page, that link in the description, or you can go to this download tab, and you can download the developmental versions, which I just recommend getting the most recent one, because it'll just have everything up to date, or if, if you don't really mind, just download this. This is like the latest stable version. Uh, once you get in, the it'll like auto-update, so, like you can turn it on in settings, I believe, and, and so you'll never have to go back to this site again. Like, I, I haven't been back to this site in a long time, and they also update it very frequently, so it's, uh, it, it's always constantly improving. Yeah, um, if you want to know if a game's compatible, or like, playable, so playable means it has like, well here, all the stuff's right here. So, uh, all the perfect ones you can expect to play super easily, so don't, don't even worry about those. Uh, and I, uh, there's no search option, sadly, but you can, uh, you know, go by alphabetical order. So if you want to look for, like, Super Mario Brothers, I'm sure it's here somewhere. It's down there, it's down there. <laughs> here, Street Fighter Alpha 2 is perfectly playable. There you go. So as you can see, I got a few games, and it's set up in this, like, box cover art form, except for this one, but that's, that's an elf file, that's not a game. Uh, and you can set that up in your settings as well. And we'll go through settings now. Here's the config settings. So in general, uh, you can enable cheats if you want. Uh, I don't use cheats when I play, uh, but you can. I mean, it doesn't matter. Uh, it's not like they're online or anything. Uh, enable dual core is nice. I would always have it on if you have a dual core CPU at least, which if you're using an emulator, you probably have a dual core CPU. Uh, show current games on Discord is, again, if you use Discord and you want your friends to know what you're playing, then use it. You don't have to. This is like a speed limiter, so like if you're in game and you want to go like 200%, like if it's a grindy game, you just want to go super fast, you can do that. This is the auto update settings. Send it to whatever you want to. I do beta. If you want all the updates every day and you're playing it every day, then do a dev but auto update. Uh, this just sends them data, like a random, uh, like anonymous data of what you're doing like uh just like booting stuff so they can it, it just improves the site so i keep it on but you don't have to if you don't want to uh, always use git recompiler all the others are just not good <laughs> especially interpreter never use interpreter uh languages yeah, whatever your language is uh themes are cool so this area up here at the top um it'll like change so if i do blue it's it's just what you want you can do light i uh, don't do light that looks awful do a mold. I, I like your mold, so I'll do a mold. Um, definitely use this. This is good. Uh, custom user style is new. I have no idea what that is. Oh, you can download a user style for this, I think. Uh, yeah, you definitely want this on because it's going to give you these game covers instead of that. That doesn't look good. So use that. Um, debugging UI. If you're if you're a bugger, if you bug. Fig, you can bug fix basically, but there's normally not going to be bug fix to fix. Uh, keep window on top. That's basically you can you can keep that on. I keep it on. I just don't. Uh, confirm on stop basically whenever you like press escape. I think it just ends the game automatically. Uh, you could turn that off if you just want to like leak full screen, but normally when I press escape, I'm just done with the game. Use panic handlers. Uh, just lets you like. It's a fail-safe in case it crashes, so I keep it on. On-screen display messages, don't, I don't even know what that does, to be honest, I've never had it happen. Active title and the window title is, I think when you open a game, it'll like put up another window, which is useful. Uh, pause on focus loss, so if you like alt-tab out, if you do this, it'll like pause the game, which is useful. I don't know why I don't have that on, to uh, Always hide mouse cursor, so whenever when it, when it opens a new window, it'll hide your mouse cursor when you're in the game, which is cool. Uh, again, I don't I don't want that. For audio, always use HLE emulation, and uh, X-Audio 2 is the best out of these. 
there is another good one, but out of these options, definitely use X-Audio too. Unless you have another, like, audio back in. Uh, this is if you have, like, surround sound speakers, which I don't. Uh, audio stretching. This, you turn that on if you're, like, lagging in game, but you want audio. So, if you, like, if you want the audio to be normal while you're lagging, but in general, you don't want to be lagging, so, like, I don't keep it on. Uh, pads, this is important, so, it, I mean, it, it is important. So what you do is, I have all my games my D downloads, uh, I'm using games in GameCube and Wii game folder. So you make a, a folder, you put all your Wii and GameCube games in there, and then you add it using this option. And, let's see, download, movies and games, and then, do you see Wii? And then you just click select folder and choose it. And, like, it doesn't show the games, it just shows the folder. It's very easy to set up, so don't worry about that. This is good because what it does is it'll um, check if games are added, like, as you go. So, I definitely keep that on. Search subfolders is good if you just want to add your, like, if I just wanted to go D downloads, emus, and games, and it would just check for every subfolder. But it'd probably take a long to load, so I wouldn't recommend it. But if you want to, that's fine. Uh, default ISO is used when you're doing stuff like this. You'd set a game that. Because Elf, like, uh, edits Brawl. So this one edits Brawl to play, like, modded. So you'd have to use this as your default ISO. So you'd set that up like that. Uh, your Weed and and Root, uh, Dump Path, and SD Card Path. Uh, SD Card Path is useful if you want to get games onto your computer. If you have an SD Card Drive or something. Which I don't, but. You, like you can get an adapter for it. Uh, dump path. Uh, that's just the, where you dump your cache. Uh, I don't. I don't mess with that. It'd be useful if you had like a USB drive that you want to dump all your cache to. If you have really low storage on your computer, so that would be useful. Uh, this is just system language. This is for the GameCube. I wouldn't tick that box. It could affect in-game stuff, so I'd keep that unticked. This is important because this is um, where your memory card is located. You have like a default memory card area, but you, it can be like moved, so it's in your PC documents, Dolphin Emulator, and then GameCube, and then there's one for Wii as well. And it's just these raw files. Now, it's very difficult to import save files. So like if you had a save file from a game, and you wanted to import it, you would have to like... On a computer, it's incredibly tough, because you have to like, take apart this .raw file. And it's not fun. So, it's rough. Uh, the Wii version is pretty pretty easy. If you click this, I imagine it would just let you use your keyboard in typing in games, so that'd be nice. So pretty nice, I'd say. <laughs> I don't use it though. I like the full experience. And then advanced, um, if you're having a really hard time playing the game and, and your CPU is just not up to the task, and you have like more for it to use, you can uh, over override it. Um, your uh, CPU clock, which would make it run faster, but it would, uh, it's very dangerous for your CPU, so I would highly recommend against it. Like, you should get, if you don't have good enough performance to play just GameCube games on the lowest settings, this is not the emulator for you, I'm sorry. And this is, this is too dangerous, I, like, don't use it. Uh, enable custom RTCs, like, real-time clock settings, so you don't have to mess with that unless you want to change the game time. Okay, that's that. Now, graphic settings. Um, generally, Vulkan is the best backend uh, for graphics. Generally, if your GPU is so, so far superior to your CPU, then use OpenGL. So, just open my task manager real quick. There we go. If I go to performance, you can see my graphics card is an RTX 2060, which is a really good card, and I have an i7 7700. So. Like, my CPU is less than my GPU, but it's not far enough apart that I would say OpenGL would be better, because Vulkan uses both. Uh, Direct3D runs off your CPU, so if you have like a really good CPU and a bad graphics card, then use Direct3D, but I would just recommend using Vulkan. It, it just like kind of adds them together, so use Vulkan in general. This lets you pick your uh, graphics adapter, so if you have multiple graphics cards, uh, then you can pick which one you want. I guess you can only use one, that makes sense. Uh, aspect ratio, I set the auto, but you can uh, you can do 16 by 9 if if you want to. VSync basically makes it to where your games always run at 60 FPS, like it forces 60 FPS and it never goes above. 
uh, if if you can even run to that, you know, if it goes below, it, like it says, down down there, it'll decrease your performance if you're below 100%. And it also prevents tearing. Uh, use full screen. That's for the game. I don't like doing that to start with, because of like start up. I'll show you when I launch a game. It should not go full screen. It might though. Uh, show FPS. That's if you want to like measure just the speed. I mean, there's descriptions down here if you don't see them. Like, if you don't understand, if my explanation is not good enough, you can just read the descriptions. It just shows you your FPS. If you play any games on PC, you know what an FPS is. Like, you know what your frames per second are. Um, but generally, I don't have any of these on. Um, rendered domain window would make it to where you don't launch a separate window and it would just play in this window. Like, the game would open in this window. I haven't tried that, and I don't know how that works, so I wouldn't recommend it. Netplay ping is actually super useful if you do netplay. Now, I've done netplay before, and I tell you, I can tell you it does work. You can play with your friends very easily. In fact, like, it's actually really easy. So if you have a friend that wants to play like Super Mario Bros. Wii with you, which is what I played with my friends, you can set that up, and it's it's not that hard. And like, I can do a separate video showing if you want to show if you want to know how to do netplay because it's actually super easy. Um, synchronous shader compilation. <laughs> uh, I would, wouldn't recommend Uber shaders. It's actually really difficult. It like it takes a really good GPU. Now I can do it. I don't, but like you can. It basically is how fast you run your shaders, which is um, shaders are hard to explain, but generally the faster the better. Um, definitely don't use asynchronous unless you really have a hard time. Uh, playing games. The skip drawing, not asynchronous uber shaders. Uber shaders are really hard to load. Um, this is good if you want to wait before games and not have the shaders load while you're in the game, but it'll take a long time to launch the game. So if you're getting stuttering in game, you might want to turn this on. Maybe. It says for systems with two or fewer cores, so if, you're, if your CPU is really bad, maybe use this option and it'll help. <clears throat> okay, so for internal resolution, uh, the native is going to be 640 by 548, which is incredibly low resolution. Um, generally, you're not going to use that uh, option. Two times native should be easy to run for almost everyone. It's 720p. It's the gold standard for PC, or it's I guess it's the silver standard now. Gold standard is 1080. If you want to go a little beyond, then you go 1440. Generally, I just go whatever your your monitor is because you won't notice any like tearing or like lower quality graphics so for me i have 1080p monitor so three times native will look good for me but it, it does look better if you go higher um, internal resolutions so i've been able to run up to six times but it like lags for me so i could do five times but i have four times looks fine for me but i have a really high-end computer so well not really really high end but it's pretty high end um this um msaa is easier to run than ssaa so I'd recommend doing, like, test. But before you do anything, when, you, when you're in the simulator, you want to test. So make sure you have your frames per second on, and you want to just check, you know, it, what, what gives you a playable experience. And you test in multiple games, not just one. Unless you only have one game you want to play, in which case, you know, you can do that. Um, always start with two and just make your way down. SSA, 8 times SSA is the highest I can get, unless I add more. Um, 16 times um, anisotropic. That's the size you can get. Again, test these. I wouldn't recommend one. Just do two and up, unless you really have a bad computer. Okay, this doesn't actually matter, but FXAA is like these are just uh, overlay effects that kind of like change how the game like looks. So let's see, 16 bit would probably make it look really pixely. It, it depends on the game if you'd want that or not. Um, these are just effects you put over, but FXAA is just smoothing, so it makes the games look uh, smoother. Um, I'd recommend turning this on. It increases your GPU load a little bit, uh, but it uh, allows um, changing the internal resolution to be a lot uh, easier. So I'd recommend turning that on. Per pixel lighting, it actually, I mean, keep it on. Um, actually, it says leave it unchecked. Uh, I turned it on. Okay, maybe keep it off. Do what they recommend to start with, and then as you test, if if you can run some of these, then run them. Like perfect lighting is going to help you. 
Um, Force 24 bit color. That one's uh, checked. It has no impact on performance, so we'll just keep that on. Uh, arbitrary mid map detection. Um, that's used for like GPU rendering. Uh, they have it checked. So if they have it default checked, probably don't turn it off. But this one, um, you actually, I, I removed this on my own, uh, or I turned it on. It gets rid of fog in games, which uh, it, might, it might not be a good thing. In some games, it will break them, so don't, don't do it. It basically just makes your um, distant object rendering better. And disable copy filter, I'm not sure what that does. Oh, it, it um, fixes smoothing, apparently. So, it, it's if it's default check, leave it on. This is um, stereoscopic 3D. Uh, if you, I, I don't use 3D, so I have no idea. I know it would give a 3D effect because I've used it before, but it's like uh, the red and blue thing that you see without 3D glasses. So, uh, I don't know what games use 3D in uh, the weird GameCube, so I wouldn't recommend turning it on. But if you want to, you can. Uh, hacks. These are um, things that make it easier to run, like. Um, make it easier to run game at the effect of like performance or not performance but like graphical fidelity and stuff so for most of these you don't want to want to like mess with um, if you want to render your graphics card more than your CPU then I'd recommend turning this on uh, and then this one goes exclusively to your GPU which is what I use it renders textures to your GPU instead of like through your CPU which is good for me but probably not good for a lot of people um, this, if your CPU is the bottleneck, so this would use more of your GPU, so if, if your CPU is low and your GPU is good, then turn that on. If you're noticing problems, don't mess with it if you're not having frame rate problems. Um, this is checked by default, so leave it on. Um, when would you want to turn it off? Uh, I guess if you have a bad graphics card. <laughs> If you're, if you're, like, you gotta test on your own. Like, I can't, like, in, in the comments, I can't give you a recommendation based on your system. Like, if you tell me your specs, I could help you, but I can't test it for you. Like, I don't have your computer, you know? <laughs> like, you, you do have to do things on your own. Uh, fast death calculation, always keep that on. And this, also keep it on. Don't know what vertex running does. Grounds 2D, for, okay, so if you're having a 2D game, this might fix some of the problems you have. The, all these hacks are like fixes for things in game if you're having issues. And advanced, enable wireframe, and it basically shows wireframes, which are like the 3D models. Uh, just like without any textures, I think. Uh, again, I don't do it. This shows rendering statistics, which would be useful if you just want to know. Like what's being, I guess, bottleneck. But overall, yeah, none of these need to be on unless you want to. Free look could be cool. It'll basically let you manipulate the in-game camera in games. So like in Super Mario Galaxy, you could like take the camera back and get like a really cinematic shot. If you wanted to put that for a video or something, I don't know what you'd use it for. It's up to you. Borderlands full screen could be good, um, especially if you have an NVIDIA card. Most games you want to run in Borderlands full screen. It's probably the best rendering or like screen mode you can get. Um, yeah, but all these you don't. Know, want to mess with except for this one. I did this because I have a, if your CPU has more than two cores you want to use it. Uh, but you have to use Vulkan when you use this, but you want to use Vulkan anyways for the most part. And it, most people's CPUs have more than two cores, so you pretty much always want that on. Okay, if you go to your controllers, this is where it gets kind of intimidating. Because like I've had friends that have had issues with this. Um, so for port one, um, this is GameCube as you can tell, and this is where you set up your Wii remotes. Now, we do have a thing where you can use real Wii remotes, I'm like, I, I have real Wii remotes, but I haven't figured out how to use this, so, uh, I think you have to have a Bluetooth adapter, uh, on your computer, <coughs> and Bluetooth adapters are super cheap, but I don't have them, so, you know, if you do, you could probably, uh, use your Wii, uh, which would be super cool. Okay, um, they added GBA, that's super cool. <laughs> that wasn't there before. Uh, but yeah, so for um, G or for GameCube controllers, uh, you really have to only worry about, um, it's it's like a normal controller, you know? Because if you've seen a GameCube controller, you know they're just normal controllers. 
Um, so it's basically just setting up, you know, normal stuff, A, B, X, Y, Z, all that stuff. Um, but for Wii, it's, it's a bit more difficult. Um, what I did is map my motion controls to my mouse, and map like the, um, the nunchuck to my controller, like the left stick, and then I use like the D-pad. Uh, so my, my, I have a SCP toolkit thing that picks it to where my PS3 controller is connected as an Xbox controller, which I can do a thing for as well. So it's not it wasn't easy to set up. Uh, a lot of my stuff just set up for my mouse, it seems. Uh, probably because this isn't my setup. Oh, that's weird. It doesn't have my Wii setup. That's fine. It probably uh, cleared my stuff when I updated, which happens. Uh, but you can save. Uh, you can save profiles right here. So if you want, if you want to like, if you just type like Xbox and you set up your controller, you can save it. Right, and then it'll be in this drop-down menu, and you can do like load, and it'll immediately make it loadable if you want to. Um, one of the other things you need to make sure is when you load a Wii game, uh, you don't want to have your GameCube uh, port enabled because it'll mess it up because they'll think you have a GameCube controller. Yeah. So what I what you do is just go none, and then you do you know just leave this on. Uh, you don't have to do that for GameCube because there's no like back compatibility, so you're good there. Um, and uh, I think that's most of it. Uh, here's Netplay. We'll go through these tabs. Okay, so if you don't have a game uh, directory set up, you can just open. So Control Zero or Control O, and you can um, just you know find the file and boot it. Uh, this is for just simulation. Start playing. Uh, save selects. So here. Uh, play input recording. Uh, that's for tasks, which is tool assisted uh, for speed runs and stuff. You can set that up if you want to. Uh, configuration options. That's what we were in. Okay. So I'll make sure. Graphics, audio, controller, hotkey. Okay, these are different. Uh, so you can set hotkeys for certain things like toggling full screen. Like, there's a lot of options here. And I don't use um, them, but ones I would recommend are save states. So if you have a game that you like, if you die, you go way back to a checkpoint. If you just want to save and then load, uh, this is good. So you can set that up to certain either keyboard presses or on your controller. And I'd super recommend using a controller with the simulator. Um, I don't know what FIFO player is or resource pack manager. Actually, I do know what that is. So you can download like resource packs of what people have edited, and you can use those. Uh, Netplay again is very cool. Um, this is cool. You can search people's uh, netplay uh, sessions and join if you want to. That's really cool. Uh, but they could be private. But yeah, that means people can find your netplay session and join uh, if you want to play with people. Which some of these games are pretty fun. Okay, you can import Wii saves this way. So I guess GameCube is the only one that's really hard to import saves on. Oh, here's how you connect Wii remotes. But you'd have to have, again, a Bluetooth uh, adapter on your computer, which I don't sadly. And I guess let's just load into a GameCube game. We'll do this one, because I know this one works. I Okay, notice how mine's in a window right now? Oh, oh look. Yeah, it's like in a different window. If you double click, right now I guess Alt-Enter. Yeah, Alt-Enter will make it go full screen, and if you Alt-Enter again, I think it'll go back out of full screen. Okay, that's super hard. I'm sure there's a way. Oh, my save file. Oh. <laughs> okay. Yeah, if you press escape, you'll get this panic candle that says, Do you want to stop? And I'm like, Yes. Uh, yeah, but my save file got deleted, so that's that. <laughs> but yeah, um, that's because um, I had my hard drive phone and I had to get a new one, so. Or, it was my C drive, which is awful. But yeah, I lost all my save data for like every single one of my games. Uh, you can create backups of your, like, Hard, or not hard drive, your um, S, not SD, I don't know what it's called, but whatever the GameCube save thing is, you can just back it up, uh, and just put it somewhere on your computer, so if you ever lose data, you'll be able to get it back, maybe put it on a USB drive, um, but yeah, uh, I think this works if you have a DVD drive, you can like, put that game on a CD, then play it from the DVD backup, but I've never 
I've never done that. It's like burning a disc. Yeah, I hope this, uh, well, this one's probably pretty long, but there's a lot to go over. This is a very in-depth emulator, and there's a lot to do. Uh, from what I know, uh, from what I remember, you don't actually have to, like, get anything else. And there's, like, a setup guide on the site. Wow, I have it way down. Guide, yeah. So if you go here, uh, there's guides for pretty much everything that, like, I don't have to go over. So there's a netplay guide here, there's a Wii network guide, which you can't do anymore. Because they shut down the Wii, uh, servers, so that's fun. Um, ripping games, this is useful if you want to get your games. Uh, performance guide, this is, again, just what I did, but it's more in-depth, and they actually have stuff that can help you. I've used it a few times, and it's actually kind of nice. Uh, they got recommended accessories, so if you want, again, your Bluetooth dongle for connecting Wii remotes and stuff, all that. And yeah, you can just download here. It's really easy to set up, I didn't download it, but you just run the setup. Um, or if it's, um, if you get a file, you just extract it and run the exe and put it wherever you want. Make a game folder, set it to run in front of that game folder so it boots to all your games. Okay, super easy. Hope you enjoyed. Make sure you get um, this. Uh, I downloaded it, apparently it auto downloads. Make sure you set that up before you start. Uh, if You probably already have it if you play any games, but if not, you definitely want to get this. Uh, yeah, thanks for watching. Hope, hope this helps. If you have any questions, ask me.